Hi, my friends, Pat Sloan here. We are starting out with the Secret Lives of Color. We have a theme of the day. I've got quilts from the vault. We're gonna talk about some fabric pulling for a fat eighth bundle to do the flapjacks in a little bit more. So let's get to it. First of all, the Secret Lives of Color. We are on block 14 and it is a color and word. I mean, it's a yellow, shade of yellow, but it's a word I've not ever used or heard before is gamboge. So there is the color. It's one of my favorite kind of shades of yellow. And apparently it was actually sold up until 2005, even though it had long before been uh, sort of processed in different ways because the old ways the color pigments were done was quite uh, intense. And this particular one, they describe how it came from trees and a bit of the process. It was used by Rembrandt. It was one of his favorite pigments to mix into oils. So that was kind of cool. So here is mine. I am on a six inch block this week and next week will be a three inch. I mean, next one will be a three inch. So six inch for, for the gamboge. And I have little pink dots in it. And then the, put the pink with the butterflies. Yes, love it. Okay. Ta-da! There, there is the whole layout for these crumb blocks. What I will do is sew, sew up this layout, then I will put a strip of purple, and then I might put a strip of just um, scrappy, I don't know, or maybe pink, I'm not sure, and then another strip of purple. So it'll sort of expand it out. I might do one strip of purple, a one inch purple, one inch pink, and then maybe a two inch purple again to give it a little bit more width and length. So it'll be a nice quilt, a little cuddle quilt. I love the purple. That's my Harmony fabric which you can use the wide backs for something other than just the backing. It's regular fabric, of course. Now I also did, oops, it's pinned. I also did the first section for the kit, for the words to live by. So there I've got, and I traded this one out from the pattern, but this went together fast. So I am loving the idea that I'm gonna go in and now cut the next two blocks so I can do the, the next quadrant. And I was able to sew both those blocks up in the evening. They are not complicated, so that is so nice. All right, we're gonna go look at the fat eighth because I have a little uh, fabric pool. So I thought I'd show you how you can kind of go through your own stash. We all have lots and lots of lovely fabric that we already own. And sometimes it's nice to go and just pull them into a collection that would be wonderful to use for one of these sew longs. Now on the Fat Eighth quilt, we're basically cutting strips, strips and squares. Uh, so you'll be taking the fabric as it's shown, like a Fat Eighth size, and you'll just cut all these strips. And then you cut lots of squares, which are the alternating path. Now most of, if, if you're buying a bundle, it's a fabric bundle that was designed by somebody. And like I showed you, I think it was yesterday, uh, there could be a range of colors. The one I'm using is primarily white, gray, and yellow, but often there'll be a few more colors. So I thought, let me pull a feature fabric. This is an older Kate Spain. For those of you who love Kate's fabrics, I'm not sure which line it was. Uh, Daydream, so I think it's very old. <laughs> I think this was quite a long time ago, but it has a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of colors. So this would be a great one to show pulling uh, some fabric that of you already own to use. So first of all, what I would do is go ahead and get uh, some purples. So I went and, uh, you know, purples are gonna be like more blue purple or more red purple. These are more blue uh, based purples. So I went through and got a collection that has some variety because I think the variety of size and also a few that have maybe a little bit more color in them. This is just a first grab. I would not be afraid to get a few others with some pattern that like this has a lot of pattern. So this one is a sort of a variegated tulip pink. So it's, you know, when you cut it up, it's gonna have a lot of different fabrics in it. And then a small scale and some medium scales. To that, when you look at this print, there's yellows, there's turquoise, there's reds, uh, there's pinks. You don't have to put them all in. There's white, you know, I think white might be the good background for this one, be crisp and make everything pop. So I do wanna put some yellow in. 
I think everything looks happier with yellow. So I pulled a couple of yellows to go with it. And then I want to go down to the reds and maybe a little bit more pinky red. So here's one that's a little bit more pinky red. Uh, I think that that is a nice shade. But then these two, this one's maybe a little bit more berry color, which also works. So I've got, now they, they are too much the same size. So I would need to root around, but color wise they're good. But I would need to root around maybe and get some that have a larger scale. Uh, these could be the smaller scale. And two or three, I think, not just one. If, you had, if I had just one yellow, uh, it would, it, there won't be enough of it. So your eye will sort of like grab at it. Okay, now if I want to add pink, this is where I want to show you about sort of looking at colors. Uh, because this pink is super light, which actually would make a really nice background for this whole thing, but this is all I have of it. But if you were going to shop and think, oh, I want a really light pink background, I think that would be good, which would be the squares and the border on the pattern. So the squares, or you're doing squares and then the border around it. A light pink like that would be wonderful. Inside with them, I think it would be it would be too bright. So that would not be good for that option. Now here is kind of a bubblegum pink, which is a little brighter than the pinks that are in there, but I kind of like it. It also has a great scale and it has some red in it. Now this one, these two to me don't really go together, so I would do like one or the other. This is a softer pink. It also has more scale, so it has some flowers on it. Um, you know, you'd have to decide whether you like those flowers with this pattern. You know, maybe you have something else, but this is a scale, an example of scale that's good. Same with this one. So I would pick one or the other. So those are a really good way to pull a main fabric uh, and then pull its friend, you know, find some friends to go with it, pick some different scale, and then you can go and cut the uh, flapjack pattern with your own stash. So that is a great way to handle it. I wanna touch base uh, before we do the quilts from the vault on my shamrock pattern for the journal, uh, joyful journal, doing one each month. So I need to get this started. And I am looking at uh, some background. Now the background that she used is kind of a, uh, what she call it, linen. She called it Confederate gray. It's called Confederate gray linen. So I have this kind of, I would call it more oatmeal color. So I'm thinking this will work. So I have my two cases of floss. This one is all Orifel floss. And then, and I have loads of green. I have all the floss and I, so I have others in other storage. But then I have a second one of these uh, holders and there's actually several shades of green in here. Looking at the pattern, I think I really only need three shades of green. Primarily like a lighter green for the hat and then a darker, two sort of medium and darks, which would do the shamrocks. And I believe some of that is a variegated. So there really aren't that many colors which is good. <laughs> so but my one thing about learning cross stitch is understanding how the threads sort of when they're just two threads, how do they look actually on the cloth? So I think this time I will actually stitch a couple of cross stitches on the corner of this cloth, which e with each of the threads and be sure that it looks like it shows up enough. That way I don't just keep going and then find out it's kind of, you know, it doesn't pop off that background. And the other thing is the flea market uh, sew along. There is mine. I've started the leaf up here. So I'm ready to do this guy. Uh, I think I used the wrong pink in the middle here because I think I used two different pinks instead of always the one. So the contrast isn't quite as high as it should be. So I'm debating eventually down the road when this is all done, I might go back and pick out that center and redo it with a lighter pink than it says. And then I'm going to look at all the rest of them as I go forward and be sure that I have enough contrast in there because there should be a little medallion and it just got a little bit mushy. So I will correct that down the road. <laughs> Not right now. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at quilts from the vault, which are what were in those boxes on the cover photo. Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. I am going to do first a little quilts from the vault. I'm here on the weekend getting 
boxes ready to send quilts to my nieces. They're three sisters, one of my brother's uh, girls, and I'm sending each of them several quilts so that everybody in their family will have one. Uh, one, one of my nieces has three little boys, so <laughs> I've got fun ones for them. Uh, I put up on the wall, this is one that will go to one of my nieces. It is a free pattern of mine called The Corner Store using my Bonnie Lane fabric. And Bonnie Lane is, that fabric was named for my mom, Bonnie, which is their grandma. So I'm gonna leave that one up there and I will just hold up pieces here and show you uh, what, is, what is going to go out to all of them. So this particular niece, I'm also sending out my Nancy Drew quilt for her daughter. So this one I did years ago during a sew along and we had, um, I forget what the pattern was or whether we just did our own. I think it was, everybody had to do Nancy Drew. Yeah, it was when the fabric line came out. So everybody did the Nancy Drew fabric, which was so cute. Really, really fun to do. Um, I think I did a pattern from my, my older pre-cut book. So you basically uh, was just using a lot of the of the fabric line. It was either that or from my um, book on novelty prints. And I didn't write anything on the label yet. See, I have to go through and uh, write on the labels if I didn't yet, like this, and some of them aren't even sewn down. <laughs> so I have to do all that before these boxes can be shipped. Okay, so the other one that's going to this niece, uh, besides what is up here, is um, from my uh, decorate my book on uh, celebrate the seasons and so I'm going to send this one out there isn't that pretty so this is a, a awesome awesome fun project to do uh, coordinating two different blocks getting that super nice chain effect on there ah, so that that also needs like so here's the book oh, I've got a tag on there still from the book so I still have so many quilts, even after I show you these, and they go off to new homes <laughs> in three different states. Uh, I still will have quilts. So this one, this goes to my, um, that's going with those two quilts. Okay, so let's do the next box. These ones you've seen recently, so they're all fairly recent from 2021. This is from my niece who was married in 2021. So this one is for her husband. Uh, it was the friendship bracelet that we did. And so there we go. It's got the red, white, and blue. So I'm really excited. This one is for him. And then I'm also sending her, I'm not folding these up because I think they all have some work to have you done on them. So I'm sending her also my fall frolic. So. Do I have it upside down? I think this is the right way. So that she's gonna get the fall frolic. She really loves the fall colors. And this has my green uh, Harmony wide back fabric. So that one is just finished. Remember I did the binding in the, the black sort of uh, faux ticking. Looks like ticking. And then this uh, niece will also get the spooky sampler she is in love with halloween things and so she's also going to get this one so there was the spooky sampler that we did turned out so cute i think she'll be pretty excited about that and i'm sending that pillow along that i did i had like would i have some cutoffs or extra block or whatever so remember the pillow so i'm going to send that one along so that that's one block okay box rather <laughs> Whew. Okay, the last uh, grouping is for my niece with the little boys. So we have some fun ones. This was from one of my books, which was the Sock Monkey Quilt. I think I may have showed you this one recently. It was a Sock Monkey fabric, and this fab Sock Monkey fabric comes out periodically, but look at the back. The whole back is the Sock Monkeys. <laughs> I love that! And then, you know, the border, there was like banana fabric and the cute little sock monkeys. And there's sock monkeys with alphabet. So that will be, I'm sure one of her boys will enjoy that. They're all, what, under six years old, I think. So they're little, little fellas still. Okay, this one will go to one of the little boys. This was from my uh, using novelty prints. 
because here what I did was use a wonderful print and have the scenery go horizontal and then uh, you could see all of it so you could see all of those wonderful sailboats and then doing the chevron or the zigzag in between them and then I used up a bunch of um, sort of nautical prints that came I think with the line okay what else is in here I've got okay this one which is another one for one this is a big one so maybe the oldest boy but it's got sailboats on it Whew, this is really big <laughs> okay see what I can do here so here we go it's got sailboats uh, and stars so fun and let's see on the back this was published in a magazine years and years and years ago. So on the back, I have some plaid and then some other blue fabric. Years and years ago. Okay, two more in here. The other manly one for her hubs. <laughs> so I've got this one done with one of my fabric lines from years ago uh, that had this um, stripe that I just did, it was a, it's a diagonal stripe, so you just cut it, because it's diagonal, you just cut blocks, and then you can get this chevron going on on the edge, it's a log cabin, so I hope he will like that. Um, and then the last one is for the, my niece herself, which is one of my um, projects I did for a fabric line a few years back called Love Letters. And so it's got hearts and the envelope block. And that, uh, that is going to, that, that will be that niece's. So she can, she can have the girly quilt. <laughs> okay, whew. Now what I have to do is be sure I have photos of all of these uh, and then put them up in my gallery. So be sure they're all up there. I know some of them are, but I know some of them aren't. And then uh, check for the ones I need to write on the label, the ones I need to, and I have to take photos of the labels. And then the ones where there are a few that have hanging sleeves that maybe I didn't get it stitched down yet because often I would send it off to the publisher without stitching it down, I would just glue it. And then when it came back, the intent was to sew it when it came back, which of course never happened. <laughs> so that's a little um, <sighs> quilts from the vault, quilts from the vault today. And if you're looking for that pattern, it is over on my website on the fabric page and you can download it. It's a free pattern. So I can't wait for my nieces to open those up. I also um, included all those photos, so they should have fun with them. Now today, is a random act of kindness day. So I hope today that you will go out into the world uh, or into the internet and perform a random act of kindness. It might be commenting on somebody's post at Facebook, at our community page, uh, or at YouTube here, leaving a, a warm comment for somebody or engaging with them and getting to know them. It might be when you go out, you help somebody that you see that needs some help, uh, whatever it is. Maybe you buy flowers for your neighbor or coffee for your coworker, uh, something. Today is random acts of kindness and a shout out to my little brother, the littlest brother, who is way big now on his birthday today. Happy birthday, Tom. And Gamboge, you're gonna make your yellow block for today. So excited, these secret blocks of color, secret lives of color. We're doing secret blocks of color. <laughs> so I love you. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online. <laughs>